boat ride away from the Honduran coast, like the Cayos Cochinas Islands, Rio Esteban and Utila. Here are where a wide range of Operation Wallace activities take place. All of the school groups spend their second week of expedition out here. Many of the volunteers also decide to come and undertake research as well as training for their paddy open water diving qualification. Here we can see students on the first day of their paddy open water diving course. They will be given a series of seminars and practical tasks to undertake. To the right to the knob there, like that, has to be hand tied. Here is my instructor who is showing us how the equipment works and how to put it together correctly. Good, smell good, <laughs> tastes good also. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you have to make sure, guys, you have to make sure that there is no fluctuation in the needle, in the black needle. I'm talking about this one here, who gives you the reading of the air. After a lesson on the beach, it's time to collect our equipment and load up the dive boat. The diving instructors go through a series of checks before departure. It's then a short trip to reach one of the many diving sites. Once at the site, we put on our kit, enter the water together and then descend to the bottom. Our instructor signals to us and takes us through a series of exercises, like this mask clearing exercise that I'm carrying out. An OK sign and handshake are given once the task is done correctly. The next exercise involves using a buddy's alternative air source, something that might be needed in an emergency. When the exercises are complete, it's time to go and explore the reef. I was amazed by the sea life and the massive structures underwater, such as the huge archway we swam through. After completing the course, which includes a multiple choice written exam, there's a real sense of achievement. Additional dive training is available beyond paddy open water level for those wishing to develop their skills further. Research activities centre upon the surveying of reefs around Utila and the Caius Cochinus Islands. This may include, for example, population surveys of conch and sea urchins, which are important both ecologically and economically. Another example of research is around Utila, where Operation Wallace is determining the role of mangrove and how this is being affected by land reclamation. Caios Cochinos is home to a unique species of snake, the pink or hog island boa. This also provides a focus for research. This is Steve and he's doing a very special project here on the Caios Islands. My project is basically trying to assess the current population levels of the boas on the islands by doing originally by mark release recapture and also then interviewing local people and people involved in the snake trade to try and find out how many snakes were taken for um, illegally for the pet trade and try and get some kind of estimate of how much the population has been depleted over the last 25 years. Steve, can you tell us what's, what's very special about this particular sort of snake? It's called the Hog Island Boa or the Pink Boa um, for this, for its um, coloration, this one you can't really see much of the pink coloration because they can actually change their colour by moving melanin um, to and from the surface of their skin. And, uh, they're, that's one of the main reasons that they wanted to be, uh, they wanted to catch them for their snake trade. 